Hey everybody out there, my name is Dragnix and this is Planet Diver. It's an indie action game that has you diving into chasms with a wingsuit. Seems appropriate to come out today considering the fact that Just Cause 3 comes out as well. You know, the whole wingsuit and that portion. Now, the game is $3.99 on the PC, but it is also on the mobile platforms for $1.99. It is published and developed by Fabraz. This is their first game on Steam. And before I begin, I want to make sure you guys know that this key was obtained from the developer for the purposes of review. That won't change my opinions in any way, but you should know that because of FTC guidelines, as well as the whole morals thing, you know? As to what's available here, you have three different segments of the story mode with 25 challenges each, 75 challenges in all. You also have an arcade mode for each of those planets in question, thus you have three separate arcade modes but they all really play the same in the end with just different hazards and different elements about them. Now within the story mode you have three different levels of completion. You have a gold, a silver, and a bronze at this point. Now in the arcade mode you do have three things that are tracked. You have distance traveled, kills obtained, and star stuff aka gold. You really should call it something other than star stuff, it just doesn't sound good. So let's get right into the action. Now I will give the game credit, in terms of the puns that it creates and the humor that it goes for, while it's not necessarily the greatest of humor in question, it hits the puns rather well and I love those kind of quirky moments that the game has, especially this water and water based puns that it does. The back and forth between the diver and her helper is rather good, although it's not anything in terms of great writing. Okay, talking a little bit about the gameplay in question, you dive into the chasm and the idea here is to complete a specific objective. On the left hand side there you will see my objective in this mission is to kill the fish. I do that by diving at this point and in the top right hand of the screen you'll notice the number of dives that I have. This will propel me forward and be able to damage anything in my way, unless of course I run into, you know, actual hazards. Top left of the screen you see my health meter. Don't have any health left, your mission is over at that point. Now. There's a good variety in terms of the, the objectives here. They did do their best to sort of stretch out the objectives from the basic gameplay elements in question. Killing fish is one thing, but then there's some nice ones like having spiders jump across the screen and having to hit them in midair. I do like that sort of variety and they were able to stretch out what little gameplay mechanics they had to the best of their abilities. Now your diver has some three main speeds, a sort of one, two, and three speed level and it doesn't go any faster than that, although you can have moments where something else propels them forward a little bit faster. Completing a level will get you a ranking and of course some gold which you can use in the shop. Now in terms of the other gameplay elements in question, that's where the game starts to suffer of course. Now I haven't shown you the break feature at this point yet, but other than that, there's not much else. Now you do get some variety in terms of some of the suits that you'll get and some of the different hazards that you'll run across, but in the end, this is the game. Going down the chasm, trying to avoid things, AKA like not getting hit, and you know, finish the level at that point. There isn't really at times reasons for you to go, for example, fast. Now while you get more star stuff, as you see in the left hand corner there, while you're going fast, it's not a necessity, and so, Players who are just playing for completion have no reason to do it. And I feel like in a game like this, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have it programmed that way. You want them to go fast, you want to give them reasons to do it other than the collectible portions. It shouldn't be that easy to beat the levels if you just go at the slow pace. See, in terms of design elements, the game unfortunately shows its iOS elements all over the place. For example, just let's take a look at the screen here. Look how much of it is actually a playable area in question. And look at the UI in particular. Some of the problems I have with this game is the information that's being displayed. You see, UI should make sense for the platform in question, and in this case it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's almost like the game was designed to be on a phone screen in question, but when they went to make it to the PC version, they just extended the sort of left and right hand sides of the game so that they could keep the middle perspective here, but then didn't change the UI to sort of suit it. Look at the information and where it is compared to the action on screen. It takes a while for you to move from one to the other considering you're so far pulled back 
and it's really hard to get that information in question out there. You're so far pulled back that it can be hard to see some details as well, and unfortunately that hurts the game in the long run. Now, in some cases it works, like this level, it works relatively well because of the color schemes in question, but as I will point out later on, it doesn't work for every level because there'll be greens and blues that blend together. The impact of the action also is lessened because you're so far pulled back. You're so far pulled back that it's hard to get sort of associated with the character in question. It, it, it feels like he's so small compared to everything else here that he doesn't move at a great velocity compared to everything else. Yeah, you're moving down, you know, this chasm at a reasonable pace, but it doesn't necessarily feel like it. And unfortunately, it again hurts the game's overall presentation. Again, this doesn't necessarily happen on the iOS version, at least from what I can tell, because again, the, the perspective is a lot different. Perspective means a lot in games. Per knowing where to have the camera and where exactly on screen to place your characters is important. And I think a game like Planet Diver shows that. Now you do have boss fights in the game, however, the game doesn't do a very good job in my opinion of, you know, taking the boss fight to the next level. The boss fight should be an interesting element of what you've learned up to that point and maybe applied in a new way, or, you know, trying something a little bit different. Here it feels just like a combination of hazards now that you have to deal with, and honestly, even though you do have some of these other elements in there, like, you know, the lasers that are being thrown there, and they'll throw a lot more at you, it never felt exciting. Again, part of the problem here is, is that the lack of speed and the lack of sort of impact that the game has because of that just feels sort of void of it. Now again, I did sort of take a look at it in terms of trying to, you know, center the screen from what I would see on a phone experience on the, on the computer, and I did seemingly have a little bit more fun with it when my perspective was, you know, a little bit reduced at that point. But here, for a PC player, I think you're going to find a lot more action games that are worth your time rather than this one. Now, the game does have some tricks up its sleeve to keep things a little bit fresh in the shop and the stash. These are items that you can purchase that will change your character's appearance, but also add a mod or two to your helper at this point. For example, the devil mod means that I can shoot a laser when I dash downwards, but I can't move horizontally while I'm dashing down. So that day does change up gameplay a little bit. I can also be Miss Pac-Man, because why not be Miss Pac-Man? I do wonder if they got rights to use her, but let's not talk about that right now. Now you do get some good mods here that can actually change up gameplay a little bit. You get the arrow mod, you can have you know, very fast regeneration on your dash, but only have a certain amount of dash meters at, in question. While you may have the baby mod, which basically says that you can't go to level speed level three, but you know, you'll have a little bit more health at this point. I also like the fact that, that Luca's in the game. I am a big, huge Chrono Trigger fan, and it's nice to see a little bit of nostalgia in my game. Now, there's also things like the trans uh, Red from Transistor, Zelda, so on and so forth, but it, it did surprise me to see Luca in the game, which, you know, I did buy once I figured out that, yeah, okay, I can get it at this point. So it does nothing in terms of the actual gameplay, but it does seem a little bit nice to add that in there. On the flip side, it also has this awkward moment with the sort of weird pose that Luke is having right there at this point. Now, talking about controls, playing with a controller was weird because the menus didn't respond the way that I think they should have responded. And while it works within the D-pad of a controller, it just was a lot easier to use the keyboard. So even though it may have controller support, it always felt awkward. Now the controls work and they respond rather nicely at this point, although I will ask the developers what you guys were thinking with some of the key bindings in question, in particular with again the menus. For example, to go to the next level in the sub-menu after you complete the level, it's the escape button. That just seems weird. Now, I will admit, it does take you back to the main menu, which of course that sort of makes sense for the escape button, but to have escape be a confirmation button makes absolutely no sense. It goes against pretty much all logic that PCs have had up to this point. When the game threw a curveball, I felt like game did something a little bit interesting and well in that case, and I really wish there were more moments like this. Like the Kill Spider mid-jump one had you do this, having to flip back and forth in order to get a shot off, and when you had certain mods equipped, that became rather difficult. Like this laser mod, because I can't change left and right, 
I have to really line up myself in order to shoot the spider in question in order to, you know, complete the objective. I did like this change of pace and I wanted to see more of this in particular. Some more creative nature of kill objectives like the left hand side as you see there. One thing I did want to point out, however, is the color scheme in this particular case. Now, in this case, it's not that bad because I'm slowing down so much, but at a top speed, especially when you're moving at the speed level three, sometimes it's hard to see the little details on the wall that, you know, change from a, you know, maybe a, a plankton that's sort of on the wall to an actual barrier at times. And the problem with that is there are challenges that have you hug the wall in question. And so you'll end up doing those missions over and over again because you can't seemingly figure out whether or not it is a wall element or not. Again, this is again due to some of the perspective problems that the game has, but over Overall, I felt like there were some bad color decisions on certain elements of the game, in particular with the greens in question. You want something to stand out against it. Maybe make the algae, you know, orange or something, something that will pop out compared to everything else in the stage. Make it radioactive or something. You are on an alien planet. I always talk about the knockout punch in games where you need something to sort of stand out from the rest of the crowd at this point. And Planet Diver, while it has a unique concept, we do have something a little bit different with the sort of wing diving element here. It's nothing that you haven't seen before in terms of these action indie games that we've seen. And unfortunately, a lot of the decisions that were made for the PC platform goes against the strengths of the game in question and makes the experience that much worse. Now, there is some variety here. There is some good elements of game design here, but in the end, it just doesn't do enough on this particular platform for me to recommend it. Now, on the iOS and Android one, that may make a lot more sense when the perspective is a little bit different and it plays to its own strengths. One other thing that I want to talk about is the music selection. I don't get where this came from. The Fallout type music doesn't seem to fit your aesthetic at all, or at least in terms of your characters and the way that they act. It doesn't feel old timey. It feels more futuristic more than anything else. I felt like you chose the music maybe because Fallout is sort of in people's minds at this point and it didn't necessarily work in terms of the gameplay complementing it at times. Well, I do like that music overall, again, I felt like it was out of place here. Alright, this is my thoughts on Planet Diver, and while I don't give the game a recommendation on the PC platform, again, I always recommend that you guys look at multiple videos. Even though I do my best to hit every element of a game in terms of the review, there's obviously things I can miss, and especially in this case with the iOS platform where I can see the game working, even though I didn't get a chance to play it myself, I do see the elements that could work specifically here. In the end, this is Dragnik signing out. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Again, I will leave my Steam review in the description below. And if you like this video and want to see more content like this, you know, hit that like button, share it with a friend, because that always helps the channel out for me to grow a little bit, so on and so forth. And again, I always try to respond to comments, so leave your comments or questions below, and I will see you all later. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you like this content and want to see more of it, you may want to hit that subscribe button on the left hand side. If you like this video and want to see more of this content, take a look at this video on the left hand side as well. And if you've missed my last video, take a look at the right hand side. Once again, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.